What's up guys, Ian here, coach of your Lightner Lantern, and I got this wrong, it's not NCLs of Stryka, it's ABL Season 5 in the Magma Division, taking on Zegar Tulip and the New Jersey Sobbles here, a uh, pretty interesting game, he's got a really interesting team, um, with some curious uh, curious things going on there. Uh, his team consists of Z Heatran, Conkelder, Z Flygon, Uxi, Rotom Mo, Ambipom, Z Jumpluff, Tapu, uh, Mega Gyarados, Tapu Fini, Hoopa, Exploud, and Asselgor. In prep, I was really scared of Exploud. If you haven't seen the team builder, you should definitely check that out. I was really scared of Exploud, which didn't come, which is fantastic. I'm actually kind of hyped to see both of the water types, despite Tapu Fini still being a problem. Um, it means that Abomasnow is really good this game. Abomasnow is actually amazing this game. I wasn't expecting to see the Flygon, and I had Flygon really, really well covered, so I'm actually a little bit sad to not see the Flygon. Uh, despite me expecting it, of course. Hoopa, I was also really scared of, and so I'm glad that the Hoopa isn't there. It means Gorgeist plays less of a role this game. Um, in fact, overall, Gorgeist is really there as a Rotom Mo check, and that's about it. Potentially wearing down the Tapu Fini with Leech Seed and whatnot. Um, but for the most part, Gorgeist is pretty bad here. Potentially checking Conk, but I'd rather have Golispod check the Conk uh, overall, unless he's a Thunder Punch variant, which could be quite obnoxious. If you haven't seen the team build, you should check it out, but I am a. Uh, I'm a Gorgeist, <laughs> I'm a Rocky Helmet, uh, Glycepod, Life Orb, Nido King, Extra Belt, Zapdos, Scarf, uh, Keldeo, and Scarf, Palm Snow. So, very offensive build that I'm going with this week, and we'll sort of see if that pays off. Really nice to see Noah Selgor, which means his only potential hazard setting is the Heatran with Rocks. Um, I looked at his team, and I was like, wow, Nido King goes in. <laughs> um, I'm not Thunderbolt Nido King, I am Ice Beam for the potential Flygon, just in case he wanted to bring it. Um, Thunderbolt would actually have been better this match to hit the Gyarados a little bit harder, but uh, that's fine. Uh, honestly, that's fine. So uh, I'm just going to rock with a Nidoking lead because it just absolutely demolishes him, and he's going to lead with the Heatran. So <laughs> solid lead option, obviously, on my part, turn one. He's obviously threatened out if he's Shuckaberry, uh, Earth Power. That's like the only situation that goes wrong for me here. But at the very least, we'll blow the Shuckaberry so that I can potentially get a uh, EQ kill on this with my Obama Snow later on in the game. Uh, or at the very least weaken this because my offensive Zapdos is actually looking really clean, by the way. Uh, double water, I've got HP ice for both of the grass types there. Um, it's really only Conk that threatens, in quotation marks, my Zapdos. And I don't even think that it actually threatens my Zapdos that much. So uh, I am just going to go for the easy earth power play here as he's going to predict that and go out into his Rotom Mo. You know, nice play on his part. He may expect me to be Scarf. Um, I don't really give a crap. <laughs> he can't kill me. Um... He can't kill me, basically, in any scenario here, um, unless he's, like, Specs Leaf Storm, I think. And so I'm willing to risk that, and the idea that he would be Specs Leaf Storm is kind of ridiculous to me. So, uh, especially against um, my team, I, I don't really think that that makes all that much sense. Despite it being a good breaker, it kind of just, it's set up fodder for Megazard X, so it doesn't really make a lot of sense to me for him to do that. Um, I am just going to go for the Sludge Wave here, and we're just going to claim Rotomo on turn two. He's going to bring out the Tapu Fini, and I figure I could just try and kill this thing right off the bat. I don't know what set he is. He could be like AV or something, and he might be able to dent me with Surf, which could be annoying. Um, Sludge Wave is definitely a reasonably safe click against this. I obviously don't care all that much about Heatran coming in on a Sludge Wave because I threaten it with Earth Power. Uh, and then if he wants to make a prediction from there, it really doesn't matter. I'm kind of just on the fence, uh, or I'm kind of on the side of attacking what's in front of me at this stage. I don't really have any reason to just to over predict at all. Uh, so I'm just going to go Gorgeist here as he's actually going to double into the Heatran. Uh, and we first can we find the Iron Ball. So he was making another another play to double into Heatran on the Sludge Wave, which I also found very strange because I could have just stayed in with Nidoking completely. Like I could have just stayed in with Nidoking, click Sludge Wave. Um, interesting to see the Iron Ball. That means he's definitely a trick Iron Ball set. I'm not sure what he would be using that for, what he would be trying to slowing, slow down, potentially my Keldeo. Um, that's about all I can think of. You know, my team in itself, he might be trying to ground my Zapdos. That's maybe another thing he's trying to do. Uh, potentially putting it um, in a spot where he can EQ through me with Gyarados uh, is definitely something that he would have thought of potentially. Uh, but that, yeah, it seems really strange. I'm not sure what his prep decision was there. I'm going to go for the Leaf Seed against this Heatran, which is a bad play. I should have clicked, uh, I should have clicked Sub, actually. Knowing this was Z Heatran, uh, or the potential of Z Heatran, I definitely should have clicked Sub here. But I'm just going to miss the Leech Seed as he gets up rocks. So, pretty poor play on my part, as I'm going to Leech Seed and then just die to whatever Z this is. It could be any, um, Z. 
except for like Z Fire Spin, I think it could be Flamethrower, Fire Blast, or Magma Storm. I'm not entirely sure what it what it would be, but Gorgas is just going to go down. That's perfectly fine. Like I said uh, prior, um, we found out the Tapu Fini's items, so I'm really not threatened by the Tapu Fini at all uh, based on that. And the Rotom is dead, and that's kind of all that Gorgas was checking. Uh, I, I could have got Leech Seeds against a couple other things, but it's really just really bad against the Jump Luff. I wasn't expecting the Jump Luff, so it's kind of strange to see the Jump Luff for me. Um, this is basically a free Nido King here for me, and I'm going to predict him to overpredict once again, because he's been doing that, and so I'm actually going to make my first prediction of the game, and I'm going to go for Rocks here, because it's good against the Jump Luff and the Gyarados. Um, it's honestly fine that he clicked Flash Cannon there. It's better that he clicked Flash Cannon than Earth Power. It's a very offensive Heatran, by the way. But now that we know that it's Z, I can just Earth Power this thing and just get rid of it. Um, I'm sure he was thinking once he killed something with it and got Rocks up that he was fine. Because uh, Rocks obviously punished my team quite a bit with the Glyce Pod, the Obama Stone, and the Zapdos here. Uh, this Jump Luff is probably running max speed for to tie Persian, or at the very least is running Jolly to outspeed Keldeo. And he's actually not going to kill me with an Acrobatics. Uh, this range is 50% maximum, and he's going to high roll me. Um, but Sludge Wave is a pretty safe play there. I thought about clicking Ice Beam. It was really bad if the gear, uh, or sorry, if the top of Fini switched in. And Sludge Wave was just all around a good play. It would still kill the Jump Luff, like overkill the Jump Luff, and kill um, kill the Fini, kill the Gyarados, uh, dent the Conk. Now he's going to go into the Fini, and he's just going to give me Fini for free, I guess. Um, or maybe just wanted to set Terrain again so that Gyarados couldn't be statused. In comes the Gyarados, and now here's where things get interesting. So I'm just going to click Sludge Wave again. I have no intention of actually defogging, um, even though my team is kind of weak to the hazards. I have really no reason not to, or to, to do anything besides just sack my Nidoking here. Uh, it's kind of just my play is to sack Nidoking. Um, and I'm actually just going to crit him with the Sludge Wave. So that absolutely mattered. I think I actually high roll crit him potentially. Um, uh, it was supposed to do about 50% maximum with that Sludge Wave to, to Mega Gyarados, and uh, the crit did 76, so uh, I'm pretty sure I high-rolled him on, on the crit Sludge Wave there, but Nido King picks up 5 kills this game so far, by the way. Count them, 5 kills. Nido King has claimed absolutely everything. Um, <laughs> this is, what a monster this Pokemon is. Uh, I'm going to try and dent the Conk here, uh, do as much as I can. It does quite a lot, and he's going to power up punch me. I believe he's Assault Vest, based on the damage that I saw there. Nido King's a really strong Pokemon with Life Orb, Sheer Force, so uh, I believe he's Assault Vest, just based on that. Uh, it had a really solid matchup, but I, but I was running enough speed for the uh, for the Tapu Fini, so I was speed tied Tapu Fini, but it was Iron Ball anyways, so um, depending on what he was creeping with the Rotom Mo there, if he was defensive or whatnot, then that was a thing. I was always going to outspeed Mega Gyarados, always going to outspeed the Heatran, and the Jump Luff was the only thing that was actually faster than this Nido King, so had a really good matchup. I'm not sad about it dying. It got five kills, which is ridiculous. This Pokemon for me has just success... Well, it's, it's succeeded so much in AABL for me. People just... Have a really hard time prepping for uh, prepping for Nido King, especially lead Nido King. I've found that lead Nido King people just don't have responses to because a lot of the time the common leads uh, are like electrics or like U turners and whatnot, and you can kind of just like kill them <laughs> like turn one. Uh, Nido King is just really solid at that, or at the very least, it can it's a fairly reliable rocker in, in that same sort of scenario. But yeah, I think this is AV Conk, and I'm not sure exactly what the damage is on this. It looks to be like AV with not max HP, but I'm also not entirely sure, because uh, the power punch damage tells me absolutely nothing, because he just picked me off from, from low. Um, so I'm just going to go to my Keldeo here, and I'm kind of going to make a risky play. So this Conk could potentially reverse sweep me here. Uh, I could have gone into a Bomba Snow, but plus one mock punch kills it, and like overkills it after rocks. I thought about going Zapdos, but I wasn't entirely sure if he'd be able to kill me at plus one with like a knockoff um, after Rock's damage, and Thunderbolt wasn't going to kill him, it looked like. So I went Keldeo here, uh, which was definitely my play. Uh, rather than going Glycepod, risking the Thunder Punch, I might be slower than it, so uh, there's there's that to keep in mind. I probably am slower than it. I don't believe I'm running any speed in my Glycepod. I should have thought about running a little bit of speed for the Conk, but I'm not running any, uh, and so instead we're, we're hitting that sort of scenario, and then here uh, i'm gonna go for the hydro pump risk the miss risk the miss on the hydro and we're gonna secure it so i could have clicked surf there but hydro looked like it was the only thing that was gonna be able to kill so keldeo is just gonna clean up the match here for me pick up a nice 4-0 move our way to 2-0 plus 7 this is a really short match it's only 12 turns uh nido king just picked up a ton of okos 
Uh, unfortunately, the crit on the Gyarados mattered, like I said, but uh, Rock's damage would have put it in range. I mean, it honestly didn't matter because he, the way that he played that out is he only had Gyarados and Conk left anyways. And so um, even if he like Dragon Dances with Gyarados or just kills me, like, okay, so if he Dragon Dances with Gyarados, I just go on a Glass Pod and click First Impression anyways. Um, or I've got uh, Scarf Keldeo, which just clicks Secret Sword, right? Uh, but if he doesn't Dragon Dance, I probably just go Zapdos there and click T-Bolt. <laughs> and then I'm not sure what the Conk does when it's not at plus one. Like, I'm pretty sure my Zapdos would have been able to pick that off uh, with two T-Bolts at that range. Or at the very least, T-Bolted into Roost into T-Bolt kind of thing. Um, what would have been some sort of play. Because at that point, once the Gyarados is dead, my Expert Bolt is, is not doing anything for me anyways. It's just kind of sitting there as knockoff bait. So uh, that's sort of how this this game definitely would have played out. You know, if he if he kills my King, I think the game still ends in a 4-0. I'm just not sure what sort of damage will be on my Pokemon uh, by the by the end of that 4-0. So that's going to be for me, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. We take on Spanik and the New York Rangers next week. This is the third time we'll be playing Spanik. I've hacked him out of both of the last games in PTL Season 2 and WPL Season 8. Um, yeah, but that's going to be for me. Hopefully you guys enjoyed, and I'll catch you guys for the next one.